So next to you will see the uh, importance of forest department. As I had told before that forest department are there to protect the forest resources so that there are no illegal activity takes place and also make, they make sure that there are certain rules and regulations or certain utilization of the uh, natural resources or the forest resources. So you can see that they ensure that the local people, anyways the local people nearby area living, they need to depend on these natural resources or the forest resources. They make sure that the local people and the needs are not ignored, but still the people do not deplete the resources that is still available at those nearby areas. And also the industries who are dependent on the forest resources like they need timber or any other resources, they need to get permission from the government and also uh, in order to obtain the raw material. And next we can see that how we can maintain the forest resource. So villagers make sure that they need not cut, the, cut down the trees. There are a lot of twigs that gets twigs and barks that gets dried in the summers and they can use these twigs and barks and also they can cut off the twigs and use it so that the trees do not get destroyed. And also we can see that these villagers, nearby villagers take their sheep, cattle and goats for the grazing and the grazing should not be over grazed or the cattle should not be over grazed so that the forest resource gets depleted and so that make sure that the tall grasses are removed and the grasses only are removed and not the other plants are affected with, by the grazing purpose and also you can see that certain people so there are as we have seen nature enthusiasts we see that there are a lot of people who are involved into the movement of conservation of forests. So you can see that there is a revolution of how to protect or conserve the forest. You can see some of the examples here that first is the Chitko Andalan movement. All of you might be knowing it. That Hug the Trees movement. It was started in the rainy village wherein you can see that contract workers they were uh, ready to cut down the trees, uh, almost all the trees in the rainy village in the year 1970. So, the, when these contractors reached the place to cut down the trees, so the village women, so they formed a human chain and hugged the trees so that the trees are not cut down. So, next comes the Sal Forest Restoration. So, you can see that Sal Forest all were almost got depleted in West Bengal area that is in 1972 West Bengal government at that time recognized that the Sal forest almost got uh, depleted and it needs to be restored. So with the help of AK Banerjee that is AK Banerjee along with villagers nearby he was able to restore 1200 acres of the depleted Sal forest in the West Bengal. So next comes the Kejri Trees Protection in Rajasthan by Vishnois. But this was really a cruel act wherein you can see the major person who was behind the protection of the Kejri Trees was Amrita Devi Bishnoi. So she was from the Bishnoi community where she wanted to protect the wildlife. And you can see that along with her in, 19, in 1731, you can see that along with her 363 members were involved in the protection of three tree trees but she lost her life during this protection of wildlife conservation act and in her name she was awarded national award was given in the name as Amrita Devi Bishnoi award for wildlife conservation act so you can see that next comes the So now where the Himalayan National Park is constructed, where is, now there is Himalayan National Park. You can see that there were alpine meadows. So alpine meadows were So where the plants uh, that was almost over those area, it was uh, 
a huge amount of area wherein you can see that during the summers a uh, lot of people used to uh, bring their cattle for grazing in these uh, areas and most of the alpine meadows were almost getting to be depleted in that area when this national park came into existence they formed the himalayan national park and named it as himalayan national park and put a fence there so that the overgrazing or the grazing of the cattle was completely stopped from there and hence they could preserve or protect the alpine meadows so next we will see depletion of forest fire industries so it's a major problem there factories or uh, are used it is not a barren land or any other land to make it um, into a factory but the industrialists make sure that this area of the forest is getting depleted wherein it is depleted means cutting of the trees so they make sure that this area becomes almost empty by cutting of the trees wherein it was also affected affecting the flora fauna and the nearby villages and in turn many other natural resources and also it is impacting the biodiversity of the living organisms so you can see that here once an industry is established a total depletion of the forest of this area is taken place then they move to the next area so next area or in the forest they take up and this also gets depleted you can imagine that within no time the whole forest gets depleted what would be the scenario then so you can see that almost all the living organisms are getting affected by the industries so you can see that when lot of trees are cut down so you can see soil erosion is a major problem the rich soil get eroded and also you can see that trees do not grow in that area again and also flora and fauna doesn't exist so if they are not able to stay in that place then where will these move so after a long time you can see the depletion of the flora and fauna or fauna they move to some other place they will not get adjusted to the climatic conditions or any other uh, conditions weather conditions or the food or anything else and these fauna also start getting depleted so you can see that villagers also nearby villagers also suffer see that depletion of whole forest takes place by this uh, industrial activities when industries once it is set up in one particular area of the forest they are running back of more amount of huge amount of income and uh, also they are only money minded and business minded people who do not think about that finally it is also an end to their own generation and also next generation so you can see that they go on taking one acre of land they cut down the trees once the trees are cut down you can see that there is a loss of trees and loss of flora and fauna you can see that there is no other way that other trees or grasses can grow in that particular area once the building comes up so next area also they go on depleting so once everything is depleted you can see that lot of pollution lot of uh, other problems come into existence and fun fine day no other organisms or the biodiversity itself will vanish away along with human beings so so to in order to protect the forest so what we all need to do 
so recycle so saving the resources so recycle the waste from industries using forest products pollutants must be minimized so you can see that government has been rules wherein the industrialists if they are uh, using some timber or cutting the trees from a particular area for one particular tree they need to plant n number of trees as per the government rules then only they can use it for their purpose as raw material so next point is government has made So it's not only that government has made a rule that uh, the industries needs to plant a lot more of trees, but it also made rules that they need to pay some amount of rupees as fairly uh, a good amount of rupees that uh, money that needs to be given uh, to the officials or the government so that this money can be used uh, for the benefit of the local people if a particular area's trees get destroyed. So next comes, so you can see that how we are going to save the resources that. So uh, recycling of waste from the industries and that too by using the forest products and less amount of pollutants must be released. And you can see that government has made rules so that industries needs to uh, plant more trees than they are using it for the, their own purpose and also industries must also pay some amount of money so that this money can be used for the benefit of the local people. So next is sustainable development. So, uh, so once we you start using uh, resources, so it doesn't mean that only particular kind of people, that is only industrialists or the villagers or the nearby areas or any other people will get the resources, but make sure that these resources get distributed equally. So resources get so all stakeholders they will help in the sustainable management or uh, conserving the resources So government will ensure no illegal activities also takes place.
next is what is the role of the industries now we have seen sustainable development now we are going to conserve the forest resources so resources once uh, see you can see that resources some of the people might be interested in uh, the raw materials some might be interested in the furnitures most of the people are interested in furnitures making homes and etc so you can see that resources needs to be get uh, should get distributed equally and also stakeholders uh, should help stakeholders are like policemen uh, revenue department resource department from the villagers to the common people all are stakeholders here and they need to help uh, sustain the uh, or conserve the resources and you can see that government should ensure that no illegal activities also takes place so that there is no further destruction of the forest resources so next we would see that industries do how industry is going to conserve the natural resources so we have already discussed planting more trees safe waste disposal So paying fair price for the resources. So we have already discussed that. Uh, so whatever uh, they are cutting down the trees, they need to plant more trees than they are utilizing it. Then safe waste disposals uh, should be done. That too in the form of the produce that uh, what they are produced. So you can see that. Paying fair price for the resources, whatever resources they are taking as a raw material, they need to pay some price to the government so that the government can make sure that the local people are, have no problem with that and they, their life can be safeguarded. So you can see next that even as an individual, we can also conserve the and preserve the forests. So how we can conserve the resources? We have already discussed it by using conserving forest resources so mainly three R's so what are the three R's it is reduce, reuse and recycle so what you need to reduce here you need to reduce the usage of or uh, you need to use the less or switch off the lights and fans when not in use so use less, switch off, avoid wasting including food, so we are get food from the crops and plants and other resources also so it's uh, directly or related to the forest resources itself including food or items of daily use and recycle paper plastic metal Reuse plastic jars, glass, or reverse side of paper. So, how we are going to conserve the forest resources or the available natural resources are by using the three R's that is, reduce, reuse, and recycle. What do you mean by reduce? The meaning itself says we need to minimize the usage of the resources. Reuse, make sure that once used material, we need not throw it away. We need to find out a way that we need to use it again in one or the other form and recycle. Recycle and use in the form of like uh, notebook papers and all when it is recycled it can be used as buff books etc so you can see that use less switch off lights when not in use avoid wasting including food we need not waste and items of the daily use recycle paper plastic and metal reuse plastic jars glass and reverse side of the paper so there are 
these are the ways that we can conserve forest resources and this is the first step or some part of it that how we can be also part of managing the natural resources or sustainable management of resources that ends this chapter.